Today, I'm going to be showing you how to color grade log footage. Now, for this video, I'm going to be using Canon C-Log3 in Cinema Gamut, shot on the Canon EOS R7. But most log footage functions roughly the same. So while it does vary from camera to camera, the processes I show you in this video will apply to most log formats. So let's get right into it. Now, before we get started, in this video, I'm using DaVinci Resolve Studio 19. Now, if you're using any form of DaVinci Resolve, so Nova version or DaVinci Resolve Studio or just a plain old DaVinci Resolve, this is going to be basically the same. But if you're using Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro or any other editing software, what I show you in this video isn't really applicable. Now, you can do the same types of processes in those other softwares, but it's going to be using a different structure and it's going to be different. But the same reasoning and perspective behind what we're doing today applies in general to all log formats and all softwares but just specifically DaVinci Resolve is what we're gonna be using. All right, let's get started. So first off, we're in the edit tab. We're just gonna go over to color and this is the color window. Now we're gonna add a color space transform. What this basically does is transforms our color space from just this log kind of flat look to something we can actually use. Now we're just gonna add this color space transform. We're gonna change our input color space to Canon Cinema Gamma because that's our gamma we shot it in and then Canon C-Log3 for our input gamma just like that. Now that's a lot better. Now, depending on the camera you have, maybe you didn't shoot it in you know, Canon Cinema Gamut in Log3, maybe you shot it in a Sony format or another Canon format like Log2 or whatever. All log formats function basically the same and you can access those different formats in here. So basically just input what you're using in your camera and DaVinci Resolve will figure everything else out. All right, next we're gonna go to output color space. We're gonna change this to either use timeline or in this video, I'm specifically gonna say what I wanna use. So we're gonna go down and do P3DCI and then our output gamma as sRGB. Now, this again depends on what your timeline and what you're doing exactly, but this I found works the best for me. All right, so we've transformed our color space from what we had before, which is just kind of gray to something we can actually use now. All right, we're just gonna expand this. We're gonna disable the clips window like that so it's a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna disable effects for now because we don't really need that. All right, now we have our node tree. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into curves. So we can select that right here and we can add a little bit of an S curve. Get a little bit more contrast in the image. There we go. Now, I think this image is a little bit too dark so I'm also going to increase the gain. Just like that, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not gonna make any color adjustments on this node. What I'm going to do instead is add another node. So for that, we're just gonna hit option S and now we can start making our color adjustments on this new node to kind of separate things out a little. If you wanna do all of your effects on one node, you can do that, but I don't recommend it because it gets a little bit messy. All right, so we got our new node. Now, I think I'm a little bit pale, so I'm just gonna move the gain over. A little bit more yellow, orange, look like that. And then before we do too much more, I'm gonna pull up a vector scope. So we're just gonna go over here. We're gonna just make this bigger. Select vector scope, just like that. Now, to set our settings, we're gonna open this up, increase the brightness of all of this, just like that, add our two times zoom and our skin line indicator. Now, before I mess with too much more stuff, I'm going to go and add a mask. I'm just gonna move this over here. I'm going to add a mask right here. There we go. And then we're going to draw our mask out. I'm just gonna say, hey, I want like just my skin tones over here like that. All right, and then we're gonna disable everything else and that is our skin tone line. Now we can adjust our gain accordingly, move it around a little bit, and then we can go back into curves and then change our curves from just the exposure to hue versus hue. And now you can see on our skin tone line, we can add these little dots and then we can move this line around just like that. Now we wanna kinda keep everything towards the skin tone line itself and not you know, all over the place. So we're just gonna move these red and yellow adjustments to be pretty close to the line, kinda like uh, right about there. Now, before we do too much more, we want to disable our mask. So we're just going to hit the mask, disable, okay, and then we're just going to click this. And that's what that looks like. Now, I feel like it's a little bit too orange, just overall, so we're just going to bring it back down just a little bit, just like that. You can see we're already coming a long way from our original starting point, which was this. Now, next, I'm going to go over to HDR wheels, and this affects different portions of the image. So, for example, I can change the shadows versus, you know, the light points of it. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna reset this all. There we go, we're gonna change our shadows. Maybe just bring this a little bit more towards blue, just a little bit, right over there. That looks pretty good. Maybe green. And then we can bring our highlights, maybe make it a little bit more yellow. Ah, looks pretty good. Just mess around with it a little bit and see what kind of look you're getting. There we go. We can change our darks. Maybe bring that more towards blue. I like a darker blue look to it. With my footage, there we go, that looks pretty good. We can move our global around as well. And that's a lot like game. We can move this around. There we go. 
Now, certain parts of the image, for example, this lamp were blown out. So now we're gonna do a little bit with masking. Option S to add a new node, and now we can do masking. So I'm just gonna drag a circle. I'm gonna shrink it to be just like this. There we go. And then I'm going to expand it like this, kind of get that super bright part of the image. That looks pretty good. And now I can adjust just this portion of the image. So I can bring it down and then maybe increase the contrast a little bit and then spread this out so it kind of fades evenly. There we go. Maybe brought it down a little bit too far, maybe brighten it up a little bit. Just like that. So it's just not so piercing. Now, if we just wanna see this window, we can do this again and just see what we're affecting. Maybe bring this down a little bit. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then option S to go back into a new node. And then another thing that I wanna do is just brighten this area up a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab the spline tool. I'm gonna to add a little line down there. Bring it over here, around the mic, back down, like that. Then we're just gonna draw on the outside. And there we go. Now we're gonna increase the softness of this so it's not so harsh. And then now we can affect just this portion of the clip. So we can make it just a little bit brighter like that. Maybe increase the softness a little bit more. There we go, option S, and that's how it looks. All right, so now let's look at all the changes we've made so far and see what it affected. Now you can do a lot more color grading than this and get it really precise, but this is kind of just a quick tutorial so you can get started. All right, so first off, we're just gonna disconnect this node and see this is where we started with, just a flat grade. Now the first node we did, we added that color space transform and that light amount of exposure changing. That's what that looks like. The next node, we did some color changing. After that, we dimmed the light and then boosted that shadow part. And that gave us this final image that looks like this. Now, again, this is just a quick grade. There's some things that maybe you would change if we got a little bit more time, um, but it looks a lot better than the original, which was this. All right. That's gonna be about it for this video, but before we go, I wanna tell you about our sponsor. Motion Array. If you're a content creator like myself and wanna level up your videos, check out Motion Array. With pre-made templates, transitions, audio effects, and even plugins, Motion Array is the place to go. They even have music sound effects and footage as well. They've basically got everything you need to make your videos look better. To get $50 off your annual subscription, check out the link below. Thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring the channel and back to the video. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. If you have any other ideas for future videos or have any other questions, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to like and subscribe because that helps out a ton and I'll see you in the next video.